Hi, I'm Seth, and we are going to make another coding learn to code video. This one will be about Boolean stuff, <coughs> operators, if statements, and comments. Let me start off with a few definitions for you. We have the word expression. An expression is, well, I'm going to quote it from the book. Hold on, let me look. An expression evaluates to a resulting value, which means, um, let's, let me show you in code. We, uh, code, 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 code. Okay, uh, let me get rid of that. So we have an expression would be at, uh, 5 plus 3. That's an expression. Because when the computer hits that this line of code right here, it will evaluate it. In other words, it'll do the math and replace it with one value. So this is the same as just writing, ultimately it's the same as writing seven. No, what was that number? Eight. Eight. Yeah, it was supposed to be eight. But the computer still does the math, so it has to do the math. But in your code, for all intents and purposes, you, it's this, it'll evaluate to just one thing. Yes. So that's what an expression is. The next thing I have is it's a, not an expression. It's a statement, okay. A statement, and I'm gonna read the book's definition again, is statements are instructions that perform some action and do not return a value. So basically a statement is some kind of code that doesn't evaluate. Let me show you the, the, the example from the book. If you, for a good one here is let A be 8. Nah, nah, we're going to choose a nerdier number. Okay. So what's happening with this line is it's not evaluating to something. It's just doing something. So you could, another way, you, I guess you could say it is a statement is a line of code that does something. In this case, it is assigning 42 to the variable a. That's that. And let's see. So then the last thing I those actually yeah that's pretty much all for the definitions. Now the, the next thing I want to go over because it's in the book by the way we are still in about chapter three of the book. The next thing there is comments. A comment is a way that you can comment on your code without it actually being compiled or needing to be compiled because it's it's more of a note you can leave for yourself or other programmers on the project. And there's a particular way that you do that. And the way you do it in Rust is actually very similar to most programming languages well, or most modern ones. So if I wanted to say what this was, I can put a note next to it. The way you denote that a single line comment is with the double slashes, like that. So anything I put after this line will not affect the, comp the compiling of this program. And just to show you, let's compile it. Ah, here we go. Okay, it compiled without whining. Whereas, you know, if I'd have done this, it, yeah, it, it just tries to read it as code. Well, this would be more useful if you leave a note of why you did something. So, for example, I would say, this is an example of a statement. Dog. Hmm. 
moving on. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got, that's a single line comment. There are mul other kinds of comments too. In this case, there's one that's called a, ah, having a little trouble, I am, a multi-line comment, which means anything I put in here will be ignored. And that's really all for comments for now. There are other kinds of comments in other languages, and this one called documentation comments, but and which have a, cert, a special, more special reason for existing. But we don't really need to go over that right now. And if you're, but if you're curious, feel free to look it up. It's a thing. Okay, so now I'm going to continue on from where we were last time, which we had talked about Boolean expressions. So an expression is a thing that evaluates something else. So if it's a Boolean expression, a Boolean expression will evaluate to either true or false. There's no other state it can evaluate to, you know, so it will either be true or false. The, let me, and I wanted to highlight the, a few of them and talk about some of those expressions and how they're different. Most of them are used for number comparison or value comparison of some kind. Um, okay. So the first one I wanted to go over with was the I'm going to name this variable r equal is the equivalence the comparison operator for equivalence so we know that the assignment operator is this the equal sign but the equivalence one would be double equals the, the diff so one means assignment. We are going to put the value on the right over to the left. And the other one is part of an expression to check to see if some, if two things are equal. For example, we can say, is 42 equal to 40 plus 2? And let's print this out. Are they equal? and r equal 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 okay and if we run it we know it should say true what oh i i made a coding error <laughs> you won't, you need to have this bracket to say oh this the first one goes into the first bracket okay true they are equal. So, and let's check. Is 42 greater than 40 plus 2? False, which is what you'd expect. You're comparing the size of things. And then there is greater than or equal to. Ah. There we go. Oh, there. Which is true because it's greater than or equal. <laughs> anyway, the other ones, of course, are less than or equal to or less than. So sometimes you want to check multiple things. So let's clear out this demo code. And let's set a couple variables. So, is the sun shining? Um, let's say it is today. And we'll say, is it a weekend? Okay, also true. The next thing I want to go over is what we call an if statement. If statements are actually part of the flow, control flow chapter of the book. 
but I feel like they should go here, so I'm putting them here in this part of the series. So if we want to choose a different path instead of just running things in a sequence for our code, then we need a way to branch it out and change direction. That is what if statements are. So for example, if we say if, um, wait, I'm going to rename these. That was oops, sun is, is, uh, is, there. So if sun is, uh, dang it, dang it, ah, having keyboard problems. If the sun is shining, we want to say, we want to go on a walk. You should walk today and have fun. Okay. Oops. Oh. Oh, I, I did a print, not a print line. As you can see, the difference is this doesn't put a new and an end of line thing on it, which we want. Okay. Yes, there we go. All right. But we want to do more complex things than that. So if the sun is shining and it is a weekend, then we want to walk. All right, so I just introduced a new operator. This this one is a for booleans only. We check if the if sun is shining and so if this and this are both true, do it. So okay. And that's what we're doing here. So for example, if the sun is shining but it's a but it's a weekday, not a weekend we will, oh, we're not running any, the code is running, but because this is not a weekend, then we are skipping this line and taking a different path in our code, which is what we wanted to do. However, this is kind of bad. You see how we're not, we don't actually have any output for the user, so they don't know what happened. We want to notify our users of things. So we can add an else keyword. The keyword for, the keyword else just means if the, if, if this first part doesn't happen, do the next. So. If the, the sun is shining and it's a weekend, print out this code. Else or otherwise, we're going to print out uh, stay inside or go to work. Okay. The so that's pretty much all there is to it. You can combine these if statements to do other things, such as, let's say, okay, let's say we want to walk, or if, it, if the, we don't actually care if the sun is shining on the weekend, but if it's either the sun is shining or it's a weekend, then do it. The way to say or is to do these pipe characters. Usually it's under your backspace key it's the, you'll hit shift and hit that forward slash, backslash. Hey, is it forwards? Which one's forward slash? To do what? Uh, this, this key right here. Forward slash is the one with its top on the right side. Okay, so this is a backslash. <laughs> yeah, so backslash, it's the same key with the pipe on it from a lot of keyboards. So shift that key and that's how you generate these pipe characters so if we run this the sun is shining but the weekend it it is a weekend it is not a weekend sorry 
this should say we should go on a walk. I didn't save it. Okay. <laughs> cool. So here's another point to make. In your code, most computers will, in when it checks these ands and ors, will only if if they know it's an or statement like it is here, they won't. The compiler will never even touch this second part. It won't even look because it knows that the first line is true. So we can just skip it. It makes it a little more efficient. There are reason we call this short circuiting and. Yeah, that's what it's called. It's a short circuit. You take the shortest path, shorting, short circuiting the whole thing. It's a really common attribute in most programming languages. Okay, so with this or statement, in order for to skip this, we need both to be false. So since neither was true, it does that. Another side note with the and statement. If the first if the first thing is false, it knows that it's false, so it can just short circuit it and not check the second thing. All right, but anyway, we can combine other things, so you don't have to do that. You can combine chat number checking. So like, um, we don't want our children to be going out if the sun is shining because we're awful people. So if the age of the individual is you know five. Or and then, ah, we want to check if the age is greater than 12. Yeah, uh, yep, stay inside. But let's say the boom bump the age up to uh, 15. then it's okay. So you can mix and match and combine. This is really it for this one. The assignment for today is I want you to look up what is called De Morgan's Law. It specifically has to do with these kinds of expressions with booleans. So when you yeah, look that up, I'll try and remember to go over that next time, but if you have any questions or comments, leave a link below. If you want, you can uh, toot at me on Mastodon. Or if you have my Twitter handle, go ahead on Twitter. I check that sometimes too, um, more than I should. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day evening. Bye. Eh.